So it's it's 10 seconds on the banana. 10 10, 10 seconds in the microwave. It's only okay to pee on me if I ask for it. Other than that, it's just rude, especially around my That's not what I've heard. That is so not what I've heard. That is so not what I've heard. Not at all. We're going to have to exactly the opposite. Agree to disagree. We got a show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, our Murder Hobo Inc., our, our Tuesday <coughs> behind the rolls, between the sheets, whatever the fuck we call it these days. Mature audiences only, by the way. Get that out of the uh, out of the uh, way straight off. Um, we don't use the word straight. Forward, <laughs> forward. First of all, I don't care. <coughs> but uh, but uh, today, uh, we are, this, is our, this is our little uh, our little nonsense <coughs> that we do every now and then uh, in, when we're not doing D&D. Uh, in the crapper already. So, but again, all the plugs. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, <coughs> check, out, check out the tiny URL merch store so that you can get yourself a snuggie. Uh, check it. Yeah, check out Kyle's wearing a shirt. Look at his shirt. Uh, Scott's also wearing a shirt. <laughs> let's introduce these let's introduce these I'll come back to frank, who the fuck are you uh i'm frank i'm uh normally the host of this rabble or the usual host of this rabble uh dm part-time awesome player and full-time master, master of production player. uh so that's who i am uh next we got uh all oh, right scott yeah, um, I'm Scott. I'm drinking, and um, caught me in poor right there. I uh, on <clears throat> on a Twitter, I go by uh, DM Poobah. I'm a dungeon master for about I don't know twenty thirty years, something like that. A long time, but it's all fun, and I'm happy, and I'm happy to be here. And I've been drinking for a while. Hey, wait a minute, Kyle hasn't had a good idea all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm catching up on he has some good ideas in email. Yeah, uh, no, no, he has some good ideas in email, so I'm catching up on that. <laughs> uh, and and uh, our third guest this evening, the, uh, the unknown comic. Uh, uh, t- tell us who you are before Brett Simmons uh, decides to give you the gong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet. For those of you that don't know American Sign Language, he's inviting all of the ladies to go fornicate with themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's no, Kyle, who, who are you? What do you do? What do you, what, 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 what turns you on? What are, what are, are you a Sagittarius? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? Like what are your masks? Trying? Uh, I'm Kyle, and um, I don't need alcohol to be insane. Yeah. It helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. It's cool. All right. And I'm, I'm Blake. Shithead. My thing still says pumpkin butt because I keep forgetting to change it. Um, so you might recognize me from the campaign. I do this sometimes. Sometimes I do something else. Um, Watch so let's, let's, yeah, fuck it. Let's, let's jump right into it. So uh, for those of you that have seen it, uh, we last Saturday, like two, three days ago, was a campaign episode after a very substantial hiatus uh, for all sorts of various and sundry reasons. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, since you were in there, why don't you go ahead and give us a rundown of uh, what happened? <laughs> oh, that's right. You were there because you were busy. Why don't you go ahead and give us a rundown of what you should have watched? <laughs> So, <laughs> you suck at this. <laughs> I, will be honest, I watched the overview and I was really excited to see Jesse, and then I forgot to watch the rest of it. <laughs> That's a, that was about the level of engagement that everyone else had. Uh, Scott, did, have you have you watched it? No. No, God, I, all you I, guys I, suck. I, <laughs> what the <laughs> shit happened? I really, I fell asleep. Honestly, I went to sleep at like three thirty in the afternoon, and I did not wake up. I'm, <sighs> I am sorry about that. I, I had set my alarm to to watch it. Um, I know I was on standby and everything to play, but I I wasn't really feeling a hundred percent. 
and uh, and I went to sleep and I did not wake up and I apologize for that because I should have watched. Uh, what happened? <laughs> Uh, okay, so the uh, campaign uh, picked up where it had left off. Our no, it heroes uh, went ahead and cleaned out the mine for the most part. Uh, Blake's character, Perpetua, killed Joey Tribbiani, uh, Carol, and... Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, and Carol <laughs> and, and Kyle allegedly took credit for it, although there is some dispute on that. Uh, those two were in custody. Uh, by Lord Bushmill, Ernie and Chris's characters. Lord, Lord Bushmill being the antagonist of the series. The guy trying to get out of the fucking rain. Uh, so Blake, uh, Chris, and Ernest were all in town. Uh, as they arrived in town, the gates were closed by order of Lord Bushmill uh, because they know there's a changeling in the group and they're trying to lock it down. There's also a large annual poker tournament uh, that is going on. And, uh, that led to a little urban adventure, uh, including a strip club slash tavern called spots where the ladies of Ming, no relation to flash Gordon came in, disrupted the show right before Barbarella went on. Uh, lady Ming was a Medusa, uh, which almost, uh, turned somebody to stone. Who? Um, Who do we yeah. have to watch the episode, or you, you got to watch the episode? So oh. not a lot of spoilers, but no you got to watch the episode. <laughs> oh, um, oh so, so, so I shouldn't tell you how far Barbarella was alleged to have been able to shoot a ping pong ball. Correct. That's okay. something they have to watch for themselves, because as we all know, Fink is the home of the Red Solo Cup. Uh, but it was a uh, it was your standard nefarious jackass strewn uh, urban adventure with Chris. Uh, attempting to steal Jesse's war elephant and getting the feathers kicked off of him. Uh, Ernie and Chris kept having to run from the law uh, when we closed it down. Yes. I would like to admit Manise threw me under the bus as being the only person to torture him. But let's be honest, he brings it on himself. Accepted. <laughs> I, still, I, still, I still take pride in the fact that I have not... Uh, no, you've just been thrown under the bus by Dewey Docomo, So Right, and that's why I tried to throw him under the bus to the guards. But yeah. yes, with the uh, with the shattered, fragmented uh, actor population, uh, I'm trying to draw it out until we can come to a reasonable conclusion. Also, since Fink was not even a bump on the roadmap, uh, I'm just pulling things out of my ass like a decent DM does. Uh, so you got to tune in in two weeks this weekend. One shot. So, if you want to get the wild hair out of your ass and play a game with these guys, eh, give us a shout. We'll go ahead and uh, help you out. Back uh, to you, I'll, Blake. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll be and as God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. Oh, wow. Turkeys can fly. Just, just I've shot them far not in not Cincinnati. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we shoot them down here in Texas. Land, so as long as shoot you throw it off of a large enough clip, it will fly. I think they shoot everything in Texas. We do. We do. So, but, 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 but no, that was a, that was a pretty good recap. Uh, there's shenanigans going on with the poker tournament still didn't get to see the play. So maybe we'll re resolve that. Maybe we won't. I don't fucking know. Uh, still waiting to see about that. It was a decent episode. Go watch it. But if you want to watch an episode instead, go watch the uh, murder of the doge. That was a murder of the doge and boots. <laughs> And boots, and boots, and boots and cats, and boots and cats, and boots and cats. All right. So let's get into what we were actually planning on doing here. Uh, this month, we are focusing on uh, just DM tips in general and uh, kind of introduction for people trying to learn how to uh, find inspiration for running a game. Uh, last week, we uh, had our map build or our, our dungeon building exercise based off of a map from a uh, Dyson Logos. Dyson Logos. Uh, if he is uh, still watching, thank you again for the terrific map. Uh, if he's not watching, thank you again for the terrific map. Uh, either way, I think he does have a Patreon uh, and he has his website. Still encourage everyone to go out there and uh, take a look at those if you're just looking for something to come up with. Uh, some inspiration for you. They're very, very good high quality 
Nice. Job. <laughs> All right. And that's enough ass kissing. I had to get <laughs> So this week, what we are... Well, hey, hey, real quick. You're eating fucking cereal and a Capri Sun at 8 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah, he had a cereal box on his head earlier. I blew on my Capri Sun and it exploded in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Mature audiences only, folks. <laughs> but apparently the most mature players. So again, like you said, if you're interested in, if you're interested in replacing one of us, we would, rel- we would relish the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but uh this week what we are focusing on is we, we were interested in uh, another source of inspiration being adaptation uh you know there are enough great writers and uh authors and producers directors creative types out there why not just rip them off sometimes plagiarism is the best fucking inspiration there is so uh keeping with the spirit of the holiday season uh, we have d- decided to present our options and our thoughts on how to adapt a holiday classic, Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> Dick! I haven't seen Gremlins in years, but I can make it up. Yeah, sure, that's good. I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. Water elementals in there somewhere. Well. That, that's what I wanted to go with. I was outvoted. They chose the How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So also some potential there, I guess. I don't know. All I can think of is crotch goblins. But uh, <laughs> just for those of you that, like myself, are unfamiliar with the story, uh, why don't we have just a brief recap of, of how that plays out and what goes on there. Uh, now I will throw it to Kyle to actually talk. Because Lord knows I didn't choose this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was watching a clip. Re- recap the story of the Grinch. Oh, the story of the Grinch. Okay. Uh, 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 um, uh, so the classic one, Grinch, he's a green guy, doesn't look like a who, with their upstart noses and everything like that. And he's like, oh, I'm going to live up in a mountain over in Whoville. That, that's just actually Christine Baranski's real nose. Oh, nice. What's she in? Everything, Sybil. Ah, uh, well, you know it then, but yeah, okay, no, I got that. Wait, I thought she was the rich lady who lived next door to Cindy Lou Who's mom. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, so the Grinch is grumpy about uh, Christmas and he hates Christmas because his heart's a little shriveled up thing. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to ruin Christmas and make everyone as miserable as I am. I'm going to steal motherfucking Christmas. Sorry, I just had a thought that my children could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> the garage. Oh, we noticed that it didn't stop you from dropping the F-bomb. <laughs> verbatim subtitles. I'm a steal motherfucking Christmas. Voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Sorry, I've been reading Go the Fuck to Sleep to my youngest child. <laughs> Hasn't caught on yet. Uh, so Great story. the Grinch goes down, makes his plan, steals Christmas, makes away with it. Uh, Raven Thoroughgood sings a lovely little Grinch song all about it. No, Ravenscroft? Thoroughgood Ravenscroft? I, I think it was uh, Gryffindor. <laughs> no, you're Maybe it was no idea. <laughs> Tony the Tiger, the voice of Tony the Tiger. I don't think any of us really paid attention to the Grinch. We're just kind of winging this. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who, who's the millennial here? I'd be Kyle. Yeah, talking about fucking Tony the Tiger? Yeah. Okay. As I eat my cereal. That's not Tony the Tiger. I realize that, but I know <laughs> who I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you sure? Two minutes of useful yeah. information followed by an hour and ten minutes of stupid shit. That's what yeah. that is. Anyways, go go on. The voice of Eddie the Eagle. Anyway. <laughs> oh, what? what? That, that's a dated reference. Okay. Steals all the things. He's about to cost it off and be like, ha, I'm going to wait to hear their cries. And then all the who's are like, yeah, whatever. We don't need presents. The lesson is Greed is a terrible thing. Christmas isn't about greed and shit like that. It's about being together and Christmas specials and blah, blah, blah. 
And the Grinch was like, oh my gosh, they're right. And his heart grew eight times that day. <coughs> and he had a busted aorta and he died. The end. Okay, that's one interpretation. Yeah, um, I, I, would have said, I would have said that uh, a, a deformed fellow with a cardiac abnormality was <laughs> driven to madness uh, by the mere fact that there was a constant voice in his head thinking about how much of an asshole he was. <laughs> But, but that, that's, that's just how I read it. Scott, uh, do you want to add anything? Did I miss anything from the story? Maybe. Uh... Um, well, I, I mean, I thought that the Grinch who stole Christmas was always about the spirit of Christmas, just the spirit of Christmas. It's this nefarious ghost that would circulate all amongst the villages and fill people full of Christmas cheer. And they didn't really know why. This one guy got left out of Christmas spirit and didn't understand what the fuck was going on. And he looked down and Christmas spirit was fucking with all these people and fucking with all these people. And finally, this guy said, these guys, these people are fucking possessed. I got to get down there and steal all their shit. Before the Christmas spirit comes in and steals their shit. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm off the rails already. No, um, <laughs> I was following along. They, they would, they that would not comes be able, as no shock. They would, they, would not be able to, they would not be able to hear his message as long as they were still consumed by their worldly possessions. So he had to liberate them from him. No, it, 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 in, in all honesty, um, the, uh, the um, um, story, the, the, the Grinch is told Christmas, it's supposed to be a classic story about what is the real meaning of Christmas, right? I mean, uh, Classically, uh, it's supposed to be anti-materialistic. Is that it's not about the presents, it's not about the feasts, it's not about all that's it's supposed to be, quote unquote, about the spirit of Christmas. It's supposed to be about community, family, getting together. And once the Grinch, who thought it was all about materialism, realizes it's not about materialism, materialism, material materialistic. I'm not <laughs> Materialism, materialism. Then, uh, then uh, his heart grows big, and he sees the larger picture, and he joins down and is accepted by the people. But I actually kind of like my idea about a Christmas spirit that's been infecting all these people. And the Grinch, because he lives so high up in a mountain, he's like, you know, it's immune. like it's it's kind of like immune to him, so he can't see it. Looking down on that big fucking magnifying glass and looking at these fucking people saying, "What the fuck is?" Going on? Yeah, and, 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 and he's he saying, and he's saying, bionic effect you know, that is making, uh, control of the. Uh... And you know, I I got to get all this shit out of here because, get. <sighs> and then he gets down there, and when he finally gets down there, he gets exposed to the Christmas spirit. Oh, he's and, infected. He's infected. It too, and then his heart grows all big, and then he's all singing kumbaya. The rest with them, you know, that's 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 what it's about. Oh, I like right. it. I do like that. Yeah. That's right. Great. Okay. Wait, so my tell take. Us, tell, us, tell us what's really. No, no, screw happened. you, so Frank. How, how this really <laughs> happened is Scott is mostly correct. It's all about the Christmas spirit and, and the uh, materialism versus anti materialism. With, 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 with all due respect to the original author, Theodore Geisel. Whatever. And anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And anyway, uh, the no. anti-materialistic group is actually Bruce Willis, while as the materialistic group is Hans Gruber, because that's a real fucking Christmas movie, Die Hard. <laughs> that is a fucking Christmas movie. <laughs> that's why I wanted to do Gremlins. <laughs> uh, so uh, here it is. It's a green fucking troll living on a mountain, pissed off at people who seemingly have everything. He goes in, he rips them off. The Grinch is a murder hobo. But then, for some reason, he gets a hat of alignment change or something, and he's like, oh, I don't need materialistic shit. I'm going to give it all back because I'm an idiot, said no murder hobo ever. Ta-da! That's a very good recap. 
understanding of the underlying story, Frank. No. I like <laughs> now he's going to play sober. sober. <laughs> so, so yeah. It, no, the, after listening to that, that sober me the fuck up right there. I mean, I'm, throughout the generations, it brings your family together. It has a positive message, and I'm not talking about positive like AIDS test positive. I'm talking like good positive. <laughs> <laughs> like the rabbit's dead positive. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. Just look at the flowers. Ah, nice Walking Dead reference. It it meshes with Scott actually, CDC actually, version. Actually, no, not not Walking Dead. That's 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 what he tells him when he kills Lenny. I thought he told him to think of the rabbits. Yeah. You well, don't, well, you don't know classic literature at all. Come on. I don't fucking know. I, all, I know is Lenny has, all I know is Lenny has to die. Lenny has to die. Have you seen the SNL skit about that? That one's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Not, not a positive, positive, feeling good. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've already established what it is that we're going to completely shamelessly rip off uh, for our adventurers. Uh, how would, how are we going to go about doing this? Um, comes to mind a couple of key things you want to pick out your uh are, are your pcs going to be good or bad what's your what's going to be your take on it uh are you going to be the bridge or are you going to be the townspeople? people are you going to be adventurers happen to pass be passing by kyle make notes of these three these questions this is what i'm going to be wanting answers right oh, uh, scott's in the bag he can't write right now what um Okay. No, I, I, I'm so full of ideas right now. It's just I can go in any He's direction. So full of ideas. Literally, fucking, floating. literally any fucking direction right now. Just point me to direction. I can talk for three fucking hours. Space. <laughs> the Grinch is an alien. <laughs> oh, that's another good one. Grinch is an alien. He comes so, down and he comes down and he has sees what's going on, but he doesn't want to interfere due to the prime fucking directive. So he sees all these fuckers and he sees these people stealing and he sees the Grinch stealing other shit and he wants to stop it, but he can't because it's a local ritual. All Love I know it. about the prime directive is that sooner or later he turns into Jabba the Hutt. No, the prime so, directive is Kirk's banging somebody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm turning into Jabba the Hutt. I removed my girdle as an action. Go watch the yeah. That was another <laughs> one. Go watch, the Star, go watch the Star Wars Day episode. That was another better one. <laughs> Scott, was that your first one? We were trying to figure second that one. one. It was the second one. Second one, okay. Yeah, because that was Eric Cole's second appearance. Um, so, but, but <laughs> yeah. yeah so, uh, the <laughs> steps, the steps for uh, flagrantly ripping off something. Uh, are you going to be the antagonist or the protagonist? Uh, with the main characters, are you going to be taking over the roles of the characters, or are you going to be uh, brought in somehow passing by? How, how do you enter the story as your PCs? Uh, and then third, I'm curious uh, what kind of encounters you would think are memorable in this particular situation. Like, uh, is there a showdown with the, with the Grinch as the big bad as a troll, or... Does he have to go and slay the townspeople or something like that? So I, I kind of want all three of you to to think about those questions and try and answer them because that's basically all we're doing today. What was the first oh, one? Oh, I got oh, the protagonist answer. Uh, which which, which uh, <laughs> the first one was? Are you the antagonist or the protagonist? Okay. The second one is how do you enter the picture? If if you're if you're how are you recruited into the scenario? Third one are uh, what are some examples of encounters that you would create just off the top of your head? So gotcha. since I, since you spoke up, we'll start with Frank for first time. Uh, do we want to do all three or just do the first one first? I want to do all three because I'm not going back and forth. Fuck that. Gotcha. Uh, protagonist, antagonist. Uh, hey, we're murder hobos, folks. We're going to be the assholes. So we are going to be the Grinch. Uh, I would suggest uh, the Grinch either be a troll uh, fighter, maybe. Uh, troll rogue maybe even an ogre because uh, uh, let, let, let me go ahead and, and butt in there real quick so uh are you going to have pre for this or are you going to encourage people to create I, characters based off of guidelines or how are you going to approach that I, I look at a holiday scenario as something that you're going to run with the family maybe introduce your nephews or nieces to uh so i would always start with the pre-gen that way they don't have to worry about the uh trudgery of creating a new character so I would create two characters. 
uh, strangely enough. That's what the holiday edition is going to be. One is the Grinch and one is Max because you got to have the fucking dog in there somewhere. Now, for me, the dog's going to be a kobold or a knoll uh, because those are dog-like creatures. Uh, and they are going to be raiders, essentially, because eh, they're murder hobos. And that's the direction I'm going to take on this one from a murder hobo standpoint. They're going to be the uh, uh, bad guys. And they're going to have several different encounters, mostly urban. However, they're also going to have to ride that stupid sled down the mountain. So there's also going to be some dexterity checks in there, uh, maybe some constitution checks because it's cold. I think Max had a icicle hanging off his nose at one point. Um, and, but he's going to be the lovable sidekick that the Grinch, no matter what he is, uh, doesn't treat fairly until the end. Once they go in town, they're going to be some deception, some stealth checks, not a whole lot of fighting uh, because in the, at least in the book and movie ad adaptation, uh, you know, you don't kill people on Christmas. It's just considered, you know, wrong or immoral I'm, or rude. I'm, 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 yeah. uh, so, you know, you're, you're going to try and avoid uh, the killing, but since you're murder hobos, you're going to kill somebody anyway, because, you know, it's fun as a murder hobo. Uh, and then uh, my twist on it is there's going to be a cursed item. And if the PC is stupid enough to put it on, wear it or use it, uh, their alignment's going to change and everything's going to grow three sizes. If you know what I mean, if you know tell. what I mean, uh, and that would be my take on it. And I, and I like that. Uh, what, what are some, actually, I, yeah, I want to add a fourth one in here. So Kyle, make note of this. What, what are some examples of loot drops or items that you would like to also incorporate into that? Because I, I do like that cursed item. What would, what would you have it specifically be, Frank? Uh, I would say uh, <clears throat> a ring because I, I don't know any adventurers who don't immediately try and slip on a ring. Uh, I'm trying to remember in the story, you, you, you wouldn't try and relate it to something a little bit more like a ball ball specifically. There, there really isn't a good way to I'm thinking of the antlers that Max was wearing. Yeah, you can do the antlers, but then only if you followed it, if you followed it by the story, then only Max the kobold slash Noel would wear it. Uh, you could have like an add-on. I'm just like, trying to think of the shit that they wore. They were normally they, they were normally naked. So how about fuzzy dice for the sleigh? Is that like a Santa hat or something? What does it do? It changes your alignment when you use it. Just, just a mere act of putting it on the slide. Yep. I'm, 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 I'm poking holes in this. No, the fuzzy, the fuzzy dice give you advantage on your animal handling check to, to navigate the slope. Said fuzzy dice, not fuzzy nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Bestiality is funny. <laughs> Oh, right. I'm not going to say that one. Yeah. The, pr the producers right. come up with a good one. <laughs> no. Carrie, take uh, the mic. Uh, she's, she's not at the mic. Uh, genital piercing. Oh, oh, the, 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 the Prince Albert of Fortitude? Yeah. Did you say this was for mature audiences only? I did. There you go. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I would think that uh, that would be uh, difficult to go ahead and work into uh, – the holiday spirit uh, when grandma has a coronary because somebody just said Prince Albert. Uh, he, he, he falls on the nettles from the Christmas tree and somehow uh, is able, is able to uh, give, give himself a very tactful piercing. I would, I would say that would be a fail on a dex check followed by a 20. That would be a prick, right? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> So yes, that that would I would have to have the item in question something that no adventurer just, not just, deal. Just maybe a bag of holding maybe a bag of holding. well there you go because he's shoving all the gifts and stuff in. that's right <laughs> good also a good opportunity for a bag of devouring ah wow, very good yeah, that's a good point I like that yeah but uh, okay uh, we'll switch over to cook a Carol with a beard yeah. What's up? <laughs> I made you write them down. Uh, I can't read my hand. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and wait for you to act right. Oh, well, then I'm going to go ahead and flip on the TV. Go ahead and yell. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, uh, are you going to, if you're creating this adventure, are you going to 
create, are you going to have your PCs be the antagonist or the protagonist? Uh, if they're brought into the story as a third, as an outside party, or are they already part of the story that you're uh, giving them, ass you're assigning them to roles? Uh, what are some encounters? And give me an example of a couple items you might uh, come up with. I know that was too much. I hope you were writing that down again. Joy. I had some of it. Okay. Oh, no, my pen ran out of ink. <laughs> okay. Um, all in all, uh, it's Christmas. The heroes are the protagonists. They're, we're not going to go bad guys on this one, in my opinion. And that's from either side that you do. Um, whether you're doing the pre-generated characters, in which case I would have the Grinch, Max, Cindy Lou Who, and maybe one other, in which case those are going to be pre-generated characters that I develop. Uh, for Max, for example, Max is going to be a goblin bargist barbarian. <sighs> yeah, that's right. I went there. Dog man. I don't have to draw a picture of it, Frank. I can just tell it. <laughs> uh, if I go the other direction of where the um, uh, the PCs are um, protagonists on the side of, hey, someone is trying to steal Christmas, they can make their own characters and um, they walk into town. Um, and ideally for this, I had a, a mystery kind of planned out for it because I thought that's what we were doing tonight. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely going to come back to that one with a better with a better gimmick because I, I'm actually very intrigued by that concept as well. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're right, whatever, it. kiss my ass. <laughs> um, so anyway, the way I had thought about it and I went through and I listened to your mean one, Mr. Grinch, over again because it's my favorite by... Thurl Ravenscroft. Great song. The voice of Tony the Tiger and Shere Khan in the better of the two jungle books, the real one, not the shitty one with <laughs> Christopher Walken. And, and none of us get to watch I, I, I will. I will not hear a bad word against Christopher Walken. You know, I think we're cowbell. I, 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 I had to carry was... that uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, so I was listening to that in preparation of that, but um, so encounters I might have is, you know, PCs enter the town, and they find that the town is celebrating uh, with a feast or something like that, because when I want to adapt and steal from something, I want to put it far enough away that the, P the players have to reach out and be like, wait, is this how the Grinch stole Christmas? And then you can nod and then really fuck with them, screw with them, fuck with them, whatever. Uh, so one of the encounters I had in mind was a tavern uh, eating contest where you have to eat a triple-decker uh, fermented cabbage and porcini uh, sandwich with a tonomonic sauce. Uh, Were you watching the Food Channel again before this show? <laughs> Your three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich. With arsenic sauce. Uh, that's, that's good. I like that. Somehow, somehow I still picture Guy Fieri. <laughs> yeah, maybe, that, maybe that's who the tavern owner is. That's uh, a good idea. In the middle of this feast, you know, things start going missing. The wild beast, uh, the star from... Yeah, there you go. Shut the fuck up, Frank. <laughs> you, 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 you have to talk, Frank, but that's take center screen. <laughs> <laughs> we would fail. Uh, but things start going missing around town and the PCs are determined to investigate it. Uh, I would have encounters with uh, vomiting crocodiles, winterized, of course. Uh, and my Grinch has a 40-foot um, mean aura because you don't want to be with them near with a 39-and-a-half-foot pole. So it's clearly a 40-foot aura. And when you're in the aura, uh, mean spirit takes over you and you're forced to catch <laughs> That's just kind of the things I was thinking. <laughs> hey, do, 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 you, do you want to give your item? Because I know what your item is. Oh, oh, the item was a joke. I thought about it, and then I was like, you know what? Don't make it an item. 
it's going to be the Grinch has this um, uh, the mean spirited aura that's like like like, a, like an aura of fear like a dragon might have. Yeah, aura, exactly. aura. I'm from Indiana, Frank. <laughs> I speak English how I like. <laughs> Yeehaw! And I'm fixing oh, to get some more grub here. I got some. Cinnamon You're from Cinnamon. Arkansas, apparently. What a, what, a, what, a, what a wholesome and... It's a bad East Texas accent. Nice nice take on everything. Oh, no, it's Arkansas. That's oh, Arkansas? Okay. That's well, Arkansas. there's not a lot of difference between East Texas and Arkansas, so that's fine. Ask his wife slash sister slash mother. Slash <laughs> <laughs> in the basement. Sister wife. To call We're it not sister Mormons. wife. We're not, this isn't Utah. Right. All right, uh, Scott, go. So I, I thought about this for a while, believe it or not. And, uh, and I wasn't actually joking when I said uh, um, I was drinking a bit earlier. Uh, I had read one of Kyle's uh, emails about uh, how he would structure it. And, and I thought there were some really good points in there. Um, so whenever Kyle has good points, I have to drink. So I started early. <laughs> But um, in, in, in all honesty, I decided that, that when I was thinking about this and, and Kyle, within, within your framework there, I would have the party be neither protagonist nor antagonist, but basically they happen in on a village. And okay, they so, think, so the br brought in by the outside. Right. Brought in by the outside, but not necessarily for any reason other than they're just travelers. And for me, the big bad, the Grinch, is a vampire, okay? He's a vampire, and he's been, for the past several years, you know, he's been stealing down to the, uh, to the village, you know, killing people, breaking in at night. Um, uh, he has a couple of people that work for him, kind of like, you know, Cindy, for instance, has already been turned. Uh, some of the other people as well. And this whole idea of Christmas cheer, that's nothing but... A cover that is only like something that masks the fact that you know yes some things go missing every year and we're really concerned about that oh yeah we also you know several of our daughters and sons end up drained of blood every few days but no we're really kind of worried about the fact that you know it's in other words it's like a kind of like a red herring it's a it's a false flag and and that's where i took the inspiration where Kyle had said there's going to be several red herrings and clues and things like Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like, like kind of like a Mina Harker type person who's kind of works for that, who works for the Grinch. So the Grinch is a vampire overlord living up on the uh, on top of the hill that this whole overload of Christmas spirit, this whole overload of joy is a mask that he, you know, that, 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 the, that the Grinch puts on people so that he has a willing population that he can go down there and uh, they're all worried about, you know, Christmas and they're worried about this and that and the other thing. And they're not they're not they have no concept of what's actually going on. And the uh, the item that, you know, that the people find is uh, that the travelers find is uh, is like a medallion that offers immunity to this Christmas cheer. And what happens if they don't find this medallion fairly quick, then they become kind of captured as well it's almost like a siren song type thing that this this aura over the town envelops them there now if they find them then they can start deducing what to happen uh they can eventually follow the clues and find out that you know there's a trail of bodies uh they can fight the grinch's henchmen you know the uh the, the dogs which is gonna be a like a uh, some type of, you know, packed wolves and something like this. Several different operatives that work in town as well. And, um, you know, eventually with the boss battle of uh, defeating the vampire that is the Grinch. Now, pregens versus characters. I would probably have characters, probably maybe five, six level to eighth level. And uh, it would be loosely inspired on the Grinch, but uh, but the idea would be to uh, a fairly loose adaptation uh, to where the Christmas spirit is um, is a mask for the actual evil that's going on. I can see that. Cindy Lou Who is Mina Harker? Yeah, no, right. no. I, I'm like, yeah, no. It's absolutely. Uh, 
Yeah, no. I, okay. And now, now it's Dracula. Now I'm into it again. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, I really like what Carl said about having clues and then red herrings to where people go off on false leads. You know, that, that's what I thought. Drink. <laughs> Check out murder of the doge. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking because I mean, didn't go Dracula. I went um, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Right, uh, right. Someone who had a weak heart, you know, tries to cure it, right. uh, and then he ends up turning into this vile creature that roams around stealing things. I what, was thinking what? Wendigo specifically. Oh, uh, Wendigo! Nice, nice. I like the Wendigo. Yeah, that, that's a that's a that's a great that's a great evil character. And, and I also thought about you know maybe one of the characters being a cleric, maybe a cleric of Pelor if you're in if you're in the, you know one E Greyhawk, and the switch being is that there's a chance for the cleric to redeem the vampire if. And then you bring him back into the light, and so you have a nice Christmas story. Uh, can you, if can if you, you so chose to do so, uh, Scott, can you elaborate just a little bit on what you were referring to in Greyhawk for, for okay. our, so, our, our younger audience? So, um, in uh, in a one E and two E, and up to part of three E, uh, before Forgotten Realms was the official uh, campaign setting for D and D, Greyhawk was the official setting for great for D and D. The best and, setting. You might be, yeah, well, yeah, uh, it, it, yeah, it is. But the clerics of Palor specifically were clerics of the light, clerics of the sun. And there's a strong doctrinal teaching within the clerics of Palor that all vampires can eventually be redeemed. That is, at the point of their death, they have a chance to convert. They have a chance to turn back to the light and reject the darkness and, and then they can find a way to redeem themselves for all their past sins and, uh, and rejoin the world of the living. And that is the, it's the redemption theme that runs through a lot of the uh, lore within the specific clerics of Paylor. That, that's actually one of their central tenets. Their murder. Uh, yes. Yes. And justifying that's true. That's correct. There are no atheist vampires in foxholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it was a it was an interesting thought to maybe say, okay, if you really want to adapt it to D and D, D and D, you know, that is not uh, to, to to try to inter try to incorporate and adapt this into a specific campaign setting like Greyhawk, then you need to have some type of redemption arc at the end of the story, saying that you know maybe this whole Christmas spirit it started, and then that that joy, you know feeling whatever you know attracted a group of adventurers maybe one of them or two of them being a paladin or uh or cleric of Palor, to come in and redeem and to try to turn the uh the uh, overlord vampire grinch back into a good character thus freeing the town from his curse so that 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 was how i would have uh, a, a strict adaptation to a specific camp but uh but like i said that was more uh inspired on the idea of uh of kyle having these you know different clues and red herrings and false flags and when once the idea of false flag came up the whole idea of the christmas spirit being just one big huge false flag that uh that um instead of being something that the grinch um you know caught at the end it was something that he instilled at the very beginning as a mask for his activities drink again sorry <laughs> I, I i was actually thinking uh more more related so or, i i was actually thinking of the grinch more as like a krampus type character and actually making him maybe like a winter El elverdin uh, okay warden kynans i think is where that's at yeah 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 yeah, yeah from more times, yeah uh, and, because I, I like that sorrowful presence, that aura that everyone's been talking about. I, I, mm -hmm. I like putting that in there. So I I would basically make him still be the big bad, even though he's not. Because, like I said, he was he's he's got an unfortunate an unfortunate birth defect and a cardiac abnormality. It's 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 your your adventurers are going to be the bad guys. He's the troll in the plastic bubble. Yeah. Mm. Kind of why mm. I like doing the idea of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because he's both 
He's both the villain yeah. and the red herring. Except, yeah. except I, I, I do kind of want my party to kill Jim Carrey just because that's. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Doctor or Mister Hyde and Doctor Jekyll had to die, <laughs> just like Lenny. But uh, no, Enough I would, of I would, Lenny. <laughs> I would I would have my adventurers be just random townsfolk, random random who. <laughs> Uh, uh, that are tired of this bullshit uh, because we aren't going to take it anymore. No, no, we've already had D. Snyder, but uh, yeah, we we just they're not going to take it anymore. They're they're tired of this nonsense because this this there's just been this aura casting over the town and rock. bringing them down, bringing them down. They've been trying to trying to you know. My first rock concert I ever went to was D. I uh, was was Twisted Sister, Y.N.T. and Dokken. Meatloaf. Dokken. Wow, uh, folks, you're gonna need Wikipedia for that one. That one, <laughs> that one is a golden reference right there. I too. Sorry, sorry, Dokken. sorry. Dokken. <laughs> yes, I remember now, now, that. Now, now, and that led me to think of Golden Earring, and now I got Radar Love stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle's completely lost. <laughs> he knows that one, yeah. <laughs> but but did you know? I heard it, it on a commercial. Did you know golden earring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that Nissan commercial. Shut up, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they're. Ultimately it's going to be, they're, they're ultimately going, I'm going, I would, in, I would intentionally make sure that they're under leveled so that they're going to be undertaken and then they're, they're going to be conflicted with how to proceed, uh, potentially taking this, uh, uh, almost again, like what Kyle had said or, and what you had said, Scott as well, uh, having, be, becoming infiltrators, you know, hmm. you're, uh, t- having having this infection and taking it back typhoid Mary style because now now somehow when, once they come back they're okay with it and now Krampus comes and like starts stealing shit. Huh. H H O F two putting a Krampus in the holiday free yeah. film bar offering free plug. Or or again talking about, talking about the spirit I'm like I still say we should have done a Christmas Carol. Well, now we, we we've all kind of referenced to this idea of like a spirit of Christmas, and that that kind of you know being talking about D and D adaptations. It, would would there be any? Perhaps oh, there, would, there would totally be an air elemental that is essentially a snow hurricane that is the spirit of Christmas. That is that ideally that's my big bad. Does it wear a hat? <laughs> it has one in it has one in its cyclone. Well, I, I, I was wondering if, like you know, you know, spirit. When you think ghost, you think elemental. When you're talking about D and D, you're thinking maybe curse. Um, you're, or you're thinking, you know, th- th- there's there's a lot of things when when you're talking about people behaving, um, people behaving abnormally. <laughs> <laughs> and it was always interesting to me to see, you know, like how a party would react. Speaking from a D and D perspective, your party comes in and you see a bunch of people that are just acting kind of fucking strange, you know, like, you know, almost like, almost like automatons, right? You know, a possession. you have to, you have to join the Christmas feast. We're going to roast the beast. You have to come here right now and help now, us. Now, now, the now, tree. Now, now, now we're in the middle of midsummer. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's totally crazy. And they do this every fucking day. You know, they, they go to sleep at the end, they come in and the people are still getting ready for Christmas. They have to get ready for Christmas. So I was wondering about, you know, how, 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 how extremes could play with this because the whole, the whole idea about, you know, the, uh, the, um, um, and what is made, I think, in my opinion, the Grinch, such a strange story or an enduring story, if you want to say, is that the, the Grinch is somewhat of a relatable character. I mean, he's mocking these people, right? I mean, you know, we, we make fun of Jim Carrey, but the reason that was such a memorable performance by him in the movie was that he was mocking these people saying, look at these effing idiots. 
Yeah, he, uh, that, that's true. That's true. That ever since Ace Ventura, that character was kind of dead. So the, 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 the idea is that, you know, you mock these characters because they're so over the top about how they prepare for Christmas. It's like, you know, so, 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 you know, far. So how, and he's making fun of them, but at the end, it's like, well, oh no, you know, oh, the, this is the Christmas spirit and we have to do this sort of thing. So how, how do you adapt that? That was always my, 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 my question. And that's the reason I kind of went into this whole vampire, this Gothic style is that how do you adapt the innate ridiculousness of the, of the Grinch story? Because there, there's a good amount of camp for lack of a better word. It's, it's, it's a campy story. And so how do you adapt that? The, the very first thing that comes to my mind, and, and I'm curious what everyone else thinks as well, but the very first thing that comes to my mind is that there was a uh, some sort of a spirit that died in its youth and that it's bringing back memories and it has cast a compulsion spell. Oh, okay. uh, uh, or or uh, what, what is it that I'm thinking of? The one where it's, uh, is, it, is it obsession, repulsion? I think it's White Pearls by... Uh... Liz, that's Liz Taylor. Liz, but, no, Liz there's, Taylor. There, there's a higher level spell, I think like a seventh or eighth level spell. That obsession compulsion, I it, believe. Obsession, I, obsession, I've never read the books, so. <laughs> that, that, uh, essentially, the gist of what I'm trying to convey is that anyone that enters the, uh, has a line of sight and enters the area of effect of the spell is drawn to it and 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 is is so attracted to it that it, it will literally like die of starvation just to be close to this thing. So I'm, I'm thinking of something along the lines of that kind of a spell. Okay. You where, could put it on like a Trojan horse in the uh, midi middle of the city plaza. Well, not, not even so much that it, it's, it's like that. That there was a, that this, uh, this entity that has these fond memories and that wants to relive this scenario uh, is, is, uh, forcing everyone to to try to bring back some kind of re relive its life. Wasn't so, that Star Trek Garden of Eden? I don't fucking know. You know, all I know is Kirk fucked blue chicks. Green, well, green, well. So, so, and, and 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 blue and gray and and kissed you horror, which somehow was the most like controversial part of that. So, Frank, you like obelisks. How about a <laughs> Christmas Yuletide obelisk in the center square that is like a cursed artifact that demands these Christmas offerings? How about a permanent Christmas tree? Ah, the obelisk. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's, it's a Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> It's a festivist poll. It's a festivist poll. <laughs> a festivist poll. There you go. There you go. You see, Kyle, when you started with these red herrings and the and the whole idea of of getting people going into different directions. Now we're no, not, now no, we, no, have a, we have a have a poll. Leave the host tonight. You're all dancing to my puppet string. <laughs> I you thought your idea was it. stupid. <laughs> I'm just waiting for him to put the box back on so I can interpret some more. <laughs> uh, no, um, as far as a Christmas spirit type of thing um, we were talking about, and you guys are going a little bit farther, and I'm going to reel it back in just a little bit. Uh, yeah. No, oh, fuck you. you. Oh, hey, hang on. Before you do that, hey, Scott, yeah. there's a dryad in the Christmas <laughs> I love it. I love it. The dryad is Cindy. Cindy Lou. Right. <laughs> it's an awakened tree. It's an awakened tree. Perfect. That, 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 that wants to be made beautiful. <clears throat> Pro DM, folks. Pro DM. <laughs> Meshing it all together. Cohesive unit. Obelisks, dryads, done. <laughs> Throw Catch in two there, weeks, folks. In a gym. We got that, too. Right. All right. Bring us back down to reality, Kyle. Okay. Uh, no, uh, going from the other side of it, having a Christmas spirit, my other thought was if I'm going to make pre-generated characters, you're going to play the Grinch, you're going to play Max, you're going to play Cindy, you're going to play someone else, and the town has been invaded by a cult of Maman, who is the greed devil, 
Essentially, you are here to try and free the people of Christmas green. And if you want to make Very it good. hokey and Drink. ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, that's good. Maman is a devil of greed. Absolutely. Love it. That's, no, good. that's good. And so the next one, the latest um, monsters from our November shows. Perfect. Love it. Oh, yeah. That's really good. That's really, really good. And so you need to steal the star from the Christmas tree, uh, which is an obelisk artifact. <coughs> oh, nice. That is how do you, helping how do you... corrupt the minds of the people in this town. The roast beast is something that needs to be destroyed, uh, and various other things that get stolen. How do you, how do you how do you counteract the innate greediness of having to steal something against being uh, consumed by the uh, by the devil's uh, sway? You're stealing for good. Fun part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious what your thought is on that. Like how because you're stealing it for good. That sounds like a great idea. I wish I would have said that. <laughs> hey, the camera was on you when they saw you. <laughs> that's good, Maman. Well, yeah, that, no, that's I that's mean, really good. Something where they steal it, it could be like the roast beast is a monster that needs to be slayed. Eat um, it and, yeah, and, no, eat no, it and like fight the Golgothan. No, it's, it's 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 a large black pudding. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking. Actually, yeah, no, that's not I, bad. I, I have, an, I have an answer for it. You steal it, and if you actually continue to be greedy, it, it counts as a cursed artifact. There you go. Yes. You get the bad. I don't, I don't know exactly how, but that's a good jumping off point for some of you that are looking for shit to come up with. Well, I mean, yeah, you could uh, make that into the lead for the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is before the Grinch ever stole Christmas. The Grinch <laughs> stole the artifact but was overcome by the greed, so he ends up climbing up a mountain and living there with this greedy aura uh, uh, artifact thing, thank you, uh, um, which eventually corrupts him until he eventually steals Christmas. Like it. Love the tie-in with, with, with Mammon, right? Because that's tying the, uh, the Christmas greed uh, whole mean yeah, that, 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 that Christ in Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> let's leave the Christ in Christmas. Why aren't there more mimics in this story? <laughs> <laughs> because you can only eat so many boxes. No, it, it's 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 capturing what the, what, what, the intent, <laughs> what the intent of the original story is, which is about materialism versus non-materialism, and then put it back in putting it into you know D and D lore, which is which is great. I I, I love that idea of a. Uh, of a, of an adaptation he's saying I'm on and maybe maybe one of his you know tying back to your uh fuck yeah I know I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to make it extra hokey just include the things as things that need to be stolen your seasick crocodiles are something that need to be destroyed the roast beasts oh, if I had to choose between you and seasick crocodiles I choose the Seasick crocodiles. <laughs> there was the wrong. That's still a great song. Put the box <laughs> back on. <laughs> now, the, the, I used to listen to this to this holiday, you know, mix, and there was that 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 song from the Grinch, and that was immediately followed by that one about the uh, um, uh, baby. It's cold outside. That people are really kind of best, you know the best song about date rape I've ever heard. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and there we are. <laughs> and we, we can't stay. <laughs> Baby, what's in this drink? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but it's well, maybe just a half a drink more. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, man. I love this. <laughs> I'm not what the right next to, the to worry. <laughs> <laughs> next week right. we'll be doing an adaptation of a song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so you play Bing Crosby and David Bowie, and you go up against three undead that are the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, and that's what we got from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's nine o'clock. We're gonna wave goodbye. 
What? We aren't doing a... What? A what? We what? got the last thoughts. Oh, fuck it. Final thoughts. Fuck final thoughts. Yeah. All right, Frank. Final thoughts. Oh, final thoughts? Uh, I thought we were doing Sound of Music. More Nazis. Always throwing Nazis. Nazis are easy to hate because they're all fucking assholes. Just like the undead, yeah. The There's my final thought. You're allowed to shoot without guilt. That's true. Scott, final thought. I, I just thought Nazi and then I thought Trump and then my uh, head. <laughs> <laughs> oh! So, yeah, uh, um, adaptations are, are, are great sources of inspiration. Uh, in my opinion, try to draw back the layers and understand what the underlying moral is. And then if you're adapting to a campaign setting or adapting to your own story, um, D&D has a lot of lore. Um, you just heard several examples about how you can bring existing lore um, from existing campaign settings into practically any classic moral story, whether it be a fairy tale, uh, a Christmas tale, or anything else like that. So um, just Nazis and Trump, that's still interesting. Uh, actually, the quick, quick fire question to, to everyone. Yeah. Uh, adaptation, ad just general adaptation. Do you fit it into your campaign campaign or is it a one shot? Frank? One shot. Mm. Scott? Campaign. Kyle. Both. It's impossible not to be influenced by the things you watched as a kid. You but think I'm you're talking about it's like a like a designed scenario for, for a for an adaptation. Uh, so, so 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 your 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 party from your campaign is going to walk into Whoville. Uh, potentially. Uh, potentially. Okay. I mean, I'm going to come up with a better name, like what? Mudville. <laughs> I, no, I, I still, I still say it's Mudville, and then you do Casey at the bat because that's a better story. But final, <laughs> final, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts? Um, yeah. Hey, uh, as the quote goes, uh, "Good DM steal." I'm the breast DM. I, that's right. <laughs> like this baby right here. <laughs> no, 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 I am Holy shit. All right, that's, that's enough. Yeah, carry, carry, carry. Shut, shut the fuck off. This was, this was bad. Bye. Bye. <laughs>